After discussing about self-induced EMF, let's learn about self-inductance or coefficient of self-induction, which is represented by L. We can define this in any of the following three ways. First method. The coefficient of self-induction of a coil could be defined as the Weber turns per ampere of the coil. Weber turns means the flux linkages of the coil and is given as Weber turns is equal to flux in Weber's multiplied by the number of turns with which the flux is linked. Suppose a solenoid has n turns and a current of i amperes is passing through it. If the flux produced is phi Weber's, then the Weber turns are n into phi, that is the number of turns into the amount of flux. Therefore, the Weber turns per ampere are n phi whole divided by i. By definition, L is equal to n phi by i. If in the above expression, n phi equals 1 Weber turn, i equals 1 ampere, then L is equal to 1 Henry, that is shown by H. So, a coil has a self-inductance of 1 Henry if a current of 1 ampere flowing through the coil produces flux linkages of 1 Weber turn in it, that is L equals N phi divided by I Henry. This is equation 12. Second method to find self-inductance. Referring back to equation 6 of section 2.27, that is the explanation we learned about reluctance. We found this formula for flux. Phi equals Ni divided by L divided by mu naught into mu R into A Weber. You can take this as equation 13 where n equals number of turns of the coil, i equals current carried by the coil, l is the length in meters and a is the area of cross section given in meter square. Also, mu naught is the absolute permeability of free space, mu r is the relative permeability. Rearranging we get phi divided by i is equal to n divided by l whole divided by mu naught into mu r into a. But from the first method we got l equals n phi divided by i. So substituting the value of phi by i we can write it as n multiplied by n divided by l divided by mu naught into mu r into a Henry. Take this as equation 14. Therefore, L is equal to n square divided by L whole divided by mu naught into mu r into a Henry or L equals mu naught into mu r into a n square whole divided by L Henry. This is equation 15, the second method to calculate self-inductance. We have seen in section 2.27 that the term L divided by mu naught into mu r into a is known as reluctance. So we can get another equation by substituting this value in equation 14 we get L equals n square by s. This is equation 16. Another way to express self-inductance. Now let's proceed to the third method. We have seen while discussing the first method that L equals n phi by i or n phi equals L i or by multiplying throughout with a negative sign we get minus n phi is equal to minus L i. Differentiating throughout we have minus d by dt of n phi equals minus L into di by dt. We take L to be a constant. That gives you minus n into d phi by dt is equal to minus l into di by dt. According to Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction, self-induced EMF is equal to minus n into d phi by dt. The minus sign is attached to the RHS, the right hand side, to signify the fact that the induced EMF sets up current in such a direction 
that the magnetic effect produced by it opposes the very cause producing it. Because it's in a direction that's opposite, we use a minus sign. Therefore, self-induced EMF, we can write it as EL, is equal to minus L into dI by dt because induced EMF, that is self-induced EMF, is minus nd phi by dt. If dI by dt equals 1 ampere per second and EL is equal to 1 volt, then L is 1 Henry. Thus, another definition for self-inductance, a coil is said to have a self-inductance of 1 Henry if 1 volt is induced in it when the current through it changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second. So these are three ways to express the term self-inductance or coefficient of self-induction in a coil. All these three methods are helpful in applications to come. Note down all the formula for self-inductance.